everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virgil. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial using three colors, three stencils, and one stamp. And a couple interesting techniques. So I am going to apply gel medium gloss. This is from the Crafters Workshop through this stencil. This one's called Nature Circuitry, and I love that motif in the corner. And I just want to put this down in about three places on this unprimed, ungessoed Canson mixed media paper. Now, when you use gel medium on here, it is going to act as a resist of any paint that you put on it afterwards. And that's what I'm hoping for. Because I'm using the gloss medium, it is going to be shiny and it's going to be textured. And you're not going to be able to tell that in the pictures. For those of you who love when I do the recaps, the recap with the prompt and process cards will be at the end of the video. So I'm putting this motif down in three different areas. And I'm taping the stencil down because the gel medium is very loose and I don't want it to seep under. It still does a little bit and that's okay. I will put a link to the video where I stamp with gel medium and the effect that you can get. It's a great technique that you can use with stencils and stamps. So I'm just putting some black paint on my glass plate here and I'm spreading it out with my palette knife and I'm going to stamp this dragonfly stamp with acrylic paint. When you stamp with acrylic paint as opposed to ink, you're going to get a little bit of texture as well as the marks. Now I was thinking at this time that I was going to put a dragonfly or a butterfly as a focal image on here, but as things go, you know how it goes, things change. So now I'm getting ready to put a base coat of paint and I am going to spray my paint, my paper with water. I wanted this to be fairly light. I don't want it to be too opaque. Now you'll see where the gel medium was, it is acting as a resist and it's showing up white, which is what I wanted. And I'm going to show you in a moment a way of taking off even more of that paint off, a, off the gel medium so it becomes even more white looking. So I'm mixing, this is a turquoise paint and a gray purple, I believe, from Liquitex Basics. So here I'm just rubbing the paint off with a baby wipe. And that works fairly well. You can also if you want more, spray your baby wipe with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and rub, and that will take off more of the paint. I didn't gesso the page because gesso will act as a bit of a resist, so I just wanted that distinct pattern. And I like this look. I like how that's showing up. Now, I wasn't happy with the dragonflies. They were way too dark. They were too much in. So I'm taking some white gesso and covering them up a little bit just to push them back. I wanted them more for mark making than anything. And then I'm adding a little bit more paint on top. So really, in the end, very little of the dragonfly shows through. But this is what you can do if you think you've made a mistake, a little bit of gesso and then reapplying the color. I wanted that soft, airy look to my paint. Now I was going to stencil more of this pattern on here and then I decided I just, I wanted different layers of pattern. And so I grabbed this stencil, it's a it's called Stitched Art also from the Crafters Workshop. And many of these stencils can be purchased at Ninny's Napkins. There's also a link to TCW and some of them can also be found on Amazon. So shop around. So I like that stitch art motif. This one is Retro Bursts. 
and I'm coming in with some white gesso. I'm just really layering up the patterns. Now what that does, it gives me this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous background that I love, but it also pushes down that nature's circuitry motif that I put with the gel medium. Now what you, again, what you can't see here is that gel medium is shiny and it is textured in real life. So it adds another element of interest to the page. Now I'm coming in with this impression blue as well as the white with the same stencil. And I decided I wanted some words some on here. This is the word stamp. I believe it's from Stamperia. It, I purchased it from Ninny's Napkins. And if you click on the stamps link, you can, you will be able to find it. I, it's one of my new favorites. It's bigger print. And I've stamped with black archival paint here. Now I'm just edging with black. And while this is a finishing technique, I tend to do it in the middle. It just helps me see wh what's gonna, where this page is going to be at the end. Here I'm doing the floating acrylic technique across the tape and I tape that off so I keep all the paint out of the coils. And this is from a Canson Mixed Media journal that is coiled, but I've taken it off the coil so I can work on it flat. And I do have a video showing how to take the coils off and how to put the pages back onto the coils. Now, this little angel is from another life of mine. I used to do folk art painting on wood and I have all these patterns. And I decided, you know, I'm going to use these on as focal images in my art journaling and on my mixed media pieces. You can use coloring books, free printables, buy digital, digital stamps. But I love this angel and it's been sitting on my desk for a long time. So I just printed this out and I'm going to glue this down with matte medium. This time it's gel medium, but it's matte finish. I'm giving it a good coat, and then I'm going to paint this. So I'm just using a small brush and just very simply painting this in. You can paint this in with big brush markers, with ink tense pencils or, or blocks. And since it's the final layer, you can even use watercolors. But I'm using regular acrylic paint. I could have painted this before I glued it down. It really doesn't matter. If you want a more opaque covering, let the one layer dry and then come back. If you try to put too many layers at the same time, it tends to, the paint gets a little bit globby. So this is the teal turquoise paint. And I believe this one was actually Deco Art Premium Paint that I used in the background. So I'm not introducing any new colors. I've only used Prussian blue, this turquoise, I believe it's turquoise cobalt, cobalt turquoise, and the gray purple from Liquitex Basics. I'm 
you add white or a little bit of black to it, that you will change the tone and you will have variation in color. Here I've added white and I'm wiping off a lot of it because I want the stripes to show. Now I'm going to use the floating acrylic technique and I am shading. I'm coming in and I'm shading with Prussian blue along here. And you can see how that just really makes it. Make sure you dry it in between or before you add more. I will put a link to the video where I teach the floating acrylic technique. And when I did the folk art painting on wood, that's when I learned the folk, the floating acrylic technique. I typically use an angle brush with this technique. And as you can see, I'm turning the page to make it easy for me to get the right angle. If I want to do more, I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to come do more. Now I'm doing the same technique with black. And I like how it looks with the blue and then a little bit of the black. All the shading makes the focal image stand off from the background. Now, I use this stitched art stencil in the background, and I'm going to put this on the girl's dress, the angel's dress, with white paint, just to bring some of the background into the focal image. If this was a magazine picture or a free printable that was colored, you can add details. There were some hearts here and I can still see a little bit of the outline of the hearts peeking through and so I'm putting that purple. Again, I'm keeping to the same colors that I have in the background. These colors, this turquoise, the blue, the Prussian blue, and the purple are next to each other on the color wheel. Those are anagalis colors. And those colors that are, you know, they're five that are next to each other will look good. So if you're trying to figure out what looks good, that's a key. Use your color wheel. Now I'm just dotting some purple in the middle of that design. Using my black Posca pen to put the eyes back on. So, and I'll be using the black and the white to do some doodling and basically stitch work on this angel. And I do go around the edge of the page. The Posca paint pens are a great tool for outlining. The white stays white, especially when you have permanent color underneath. If you do it on top of watercolor or something that might be more activated by water that might bleed through and will turn your white whatever color it is so from my believe sentiment pack that's available at ninny's napkins i found this one i'm realistic i expect miracles so i'm going i blew this up because with all my sentiments, you uh, I show you how to 
make them bigger or make them smaller so they will fit whatever project you are doing. I'm just playing with where I want these. And then I'm going to put some gel medium down and glue this down. Once that's completely dry, I'm coming in with my black Posca pan and I'm just putting a line on top and below, and I'm going a little past the edge. I just like that look. You can see what a nice black line that Posca pen gives. Now I'm taking off the tape. And I'm going to do that same dash work that I put on the angel around the page. Again, that ties it all together. What are your two favorite colors or color combination? Leave me a comment in the description below, below description box. I absolutely love the page and I hope you've enjoyed watching me create. So now let's do the recap. So I started with putting gel medium through a stencil. This acts as a resist when I apply color. I stamped with acrylic paint. You remember that dragonfly stamp? Then I applied a base coat of colors. I used two colors, the purple and the turquoise. That's an enagalous color scheme. They are in next to each other on the color wheel. If you don't have a color wheel, you can print one off. Now, I didn't like those dragonflies, so I applied white gesso, a wash of white gesso to push them back, and then I put more color. So basically, I undid what I did, and that's always a possibility. Then I stenciled and I stamped, put lots of layers and patterns into the, this background. I collaged down the focal image. This one came from a folk art book. I shaded it with the floating acrylic technique. I did some doodling with the Posca pens and I edged the page. Thank you so much. Happy creating.